in the presence to say thank you for life, Father. Thank you for your glory, your grace, your mercy, Father God, your presence, your provisions. We're so grateful for what you've done for us, Father God, these past days, these past weeks. Father, thank you for keeping us, Father, keeping us steadfast in your faith. Thank you for giving us this platform to, to come together and fellowship and discuss your word and to get deeper into, into your word, Father God, and to gain more insight into what it is you've provided for us, Father God, the, the word, which is so powerful to stay. Greater as we go through this session, be with Lundy, Father, help him to present in an eloquent and interactive way, Father, help us to be interactive as well. Help us to loan our, our thoughts, our ideas, in order to engage a, a, an insightful and a, a interesting conversation, Father God. And I pray that at the end of this all, that we have better insight, we have, we have uh, more detailed insight as to what goes on in this world in terms of demons and ghosts and different spirits and spiritual warfare, Father God. We pray that we come out of this session stronger, Father God, and more well-informed as well. We pray that you bless us, bless those who are not with us this evening. I pray that you bring them along as they will. I pray that you continue to bless us and provide for us this day, Father. In Jesus' name, I pray, amen. Appreciate that, prayer. Appreciate that. Yes, I. All right, so we got about 15 persons on this Zoom tonight. For our icebreaker, I have a simple question and then a more complicated question. Uh, you don't have to think too hard on it uh, for the latter part of the question, but first I want you to state your name, whether you believe in ghosts or not, and what was the highlight of it. Very quickly, you don't have to go into the details, just uh, follow that. I'll go. Um, do I believe in ghosts? I think so. I think I believe in them. Um, I've been hearing too much stories, King, too much real stories. I have about the story about that house on Collins Avenue one time with the uh, tree is shaking and thing. I, but, uh, and I hear that from multiple people, King, so I know that <laughs> I know multiple people ain't just getting off like that. Uh -huh. Um, so I, I'd say I think I believe in them. I, I think they, yeah, let's go with that. But, um, highlight of my week, um, motto, I get, um, I got a ten thousand dollar scholarship from Doctor's Hospital for four years for schooling, so oh, God is good, Dred. That's the highlight of my week. Appreciate it. Okay. All right, who's next? Savannah here. Um, I, I do believe in ghosts and spirits and those sort of things. And the highlight of my week is not being on lockdown. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's it. Keep it going. Um, Basha. Lano, um, yo. Oh, okay. Yo. Hi, Lano. <laughs> um, I'll just go quick. Um, um I believe I be in. Oh, Jim. Oh, sorry. Go on, go. Go on. Okay, I don't know. You want me to go? Yeah, go ahead. Okay. Yeah, ladies you. first, please. <laughs> so. I, I think I believe in um, ghosts and spirits, and the highlight of my week was just eating KFC. Well, at least you get the naked job. All right. Um, personally, yeah, I believe in it. Go again. I feel like yeah, I believe in it because I had like a uh, weird experience. Uh -huh. I say, yeah, I believe in hard love. Glenn has to next. I know the house finally, so yeah. Now, no, I only hear the first part. Hey, you say you believe in ghosts because you had a weird experience, but I ain't hear whatever you say after that. Oh, all right. They say, yeah, I had a weird experience. I had a weird experience before. Uh -huh. Experience. And uh -huh. I say the best part of happened yet is going to be tomorrow because, you know, Stepping out, so yeah. Cool, cool. All right, Lano, I'm looking forward to hearing with that experience uh, when that portion of the discussion comes. All right, who's next? All right, me up on you. All right, Ken and you. And I guess the highlight of my week will probably be getting to eat Wendy's twice this week. <laughs> Google, twice. And then uh, ghost experience, I in between. To be honest, I've been in between. All right. Who else you got? 
Hi. 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 Oh, sorry. Hi, go ahead. You go. Oh, okay. Thanks. I um, this Olivia. I do believe in ghosts and spirits, and um, the highlight of my week was well, the lunch I had yesterday. I had Annie Anne's and some from one of my friends, and I just thought it was a really good lunch, and I'll always remember it. All right. Very nice. Very nice. All right, yeah, this is, my name is Lorenz. Anyway, this is Lorenz. And yeah, I do believe in ghosts, although I've never seen one. I've heard a lot from other people's experiences and stuff like that. And the highlight of my week was getting gifted and no laptop. Good. All right, not bad, not bad. Uh, who else you got? Keisha, Keith. Uh, who else? Hey, good night, everybody. Um, I would say, yeah, I believe in ghosts because I always hear stories with people in though, especially all the people in thing, and I, I don't believe they be freaking out. So, and the highlight of my week was going to the beach. That's powerful. Come on, since Lani called me out, I got to go, Jared. So, everybody, hi, my name is Keisha. Um... I do believe in ghosts. I like spooky stuff and I like watching like scary movies and stuff like that. So I definitely do believe in those kinds of things. And my highlight this week would probably be not having class on Wednesday. All right, so All right, we got a few more people going. Yeah, that's right, Shane. I believe in ghosts. I think the world just too big not to. Uh, I like, I guess, getting some Wendy's vouchers today. Same, same. All right. Who else you got? Abby, I think I saw, I think I saw Duchess. Keith ain't going yet. Let's go. Someone. Hi, good night. Um, what's the question I just reached? I don't know what's going on. On the screen, do you believe in ghosts? What was the highlight of it? Very quickly, not to go into too much detail. If I believe in ghosts, how did you say I can name? Yeah. Yeah, I do. Uh, and the highlight of it? Um. Um, getting getting two loans closed this week. Okay. All right. Nice. Uh -huh. All right. Who, who else you got? Anyone else? I mean, I I happy about the vouchers I get too. Second, I like. <laughs> yeah, wait them vouchers popping, baby. I guess we use one of them today. Hey, JJ. All right, I guess that's everyone else who wants something to say. Uh, we didn't do it all. So our discussion format for the night, first we'll be looking at what the world has to say, what's the general belief, beliefs on ghosts, spirits, demons, and the like. Then I want to hear from you all. I want to hear what you all have to say. More, so that you all, more, more than that you all believe or not. Also your experiences, stories you've heard, anything you could or relate with, and then finally we look at what the Bible has to say about ghosts, uh, spirits, demons, and the like. Okay. So first of all, let's talk about some terminologies and terms that we need to be uh, familiar with. Uh, we have exorcism. Exorcism is a religious or spiritual practice of evicting demons or other spiritual entities from a person or an area that is believed to be then you have supernatural. That's a manifestation or event attributed to some force beyond what we can understand as it relates to science or the laws of nature. A ghost. I see uh, a lot of you are uh, in the same way you believe in ghosts or not. You said ghosts and spirits. So you made a distinction. I'm glad you did that. Because there's uh, generally two different uh, definitions when it comes to ghosts. A widely accepted definition is the apparition of a dead person, be 
give the a pair of thumb bar to the living or goes to me and like a spirit. Okay, so it's good that you pointed out uh, there's a distinction between ghost and spirit. Manual paranormal. This is phenomena that is described in popular culture, the non-scientific bodies of knowledge, uh, whose existence and context described is beyond normal or scientific uh, explanation. So it's kind of related to supernatural. Haunted, you know, haunted can, uh, means frequented by ghosts. Uh, or it can mean if a person is haunted, then that means shown signs of mental, mental anguish or torment uh, from, of course, the spirit. Demons, all right? A demon is an evil spirit. A demon is not a ghost. A demon is an evil spirit or a devil, especially one thought to possess a person or act as a tormentor in hell. And then we have Hades. Uh, Hades is regarded as, as a place or state of departed spirits. It's also known as hell, which comes from the Greek god of the dead. So uh, hell uh, is divided into three different words that all mean hell. You have Sheol, which is the grave, which can be described as a hell where uh, dead bodies go. Then you have uh, fiery hell, which is Gehenna, which is the place of punishment for the wicked. And then you have hell as in Haiti, which is just the resting place of the dead. Uh, also, we have Abraham's bosom. We remember this uh, in the parable of Lazarus and the rich man. Uh, this is also known as paradise. And this is the place where the saints await judgment after they have died. Necromancy. Necromancy. This is the supposed practice of communicating with the dead, especially in order to predict the future. So people who we call spiritists or mediums, they often engage in necromancy. And then we have sorcery, which is the use of power gained from the assistance or control of evil spirits, especially for divining. And when we say divining, we're talking about predicting the future, uh, uh, interpreting uh, different complex things. And then we have a seance, which is our final uh, terminology before we go forward. This is a meeting at which people attempt to make contact with the dead, especially through the agency of the media. All right, so those are the terms you need to be familiar with. Uh, those who want to engage in this discussion tonight, they want to research this. So, what the world has to say, you know, sorry, how... no, sorry Landy, sorry to interrupt. I, your audio is in and out. I don't know if it's just me who's detecting that. You perhaps want to be a little bit closer to the mic and remain consistent there. All right, thanks for saying such. You can hear me now? Yeah, it's really in and out. A little better, all right. Thanks. Yeah. So I was saying that our horror movies are, and the horror movie industry is a very, is a multi-billion dollar industry. And the reason being is human beings have always had a fascination with the supernatural, with the world of the dead, with the leather realm, with the underworld. Human beings have always had a fascination with things that they can't explain. We know there are a lot of horror movies out there that depict demons and ghosts in various ways that may be true or untrue. And I'm showing you a bunch of different uh, horror movies that are out there. I don't know if we have any horror, horror fans on the Zoom tonight, but you probably would be familiar with a lot of these movies that you see here. But we often see in these movies, we typically have a location, a house that is haunted by some spirit. Uh, some ghost of a dead person, or it may be a demon with the exorcism movies. And this demon is doing all kinds of things, all kinds of supernatural things. They're crawling up on walls, their heads are spinning backwards. Uh, they have superpower. And a lot of times you see in these movies as well, the demon has no regard for uh, the person, usually a Catholic priest who is trying to uh, exorcise that demon. So horror, movie, horror movies are very uh, common uh, with persons. I'm sure a few of you here are big fans of it and have watched some of the movies I have shown here. All right, besides that, a uh, lot of persons are actually surprised that a lot of you all actually did believe in ghosts. I was surprised. I thought a lot of you all would have said no, but it was good to know that you all believe in ghosts. Uh, you all have that in common with a lot of people around the world. And even the disciples, 
uh, Jesus' disciples in the Bible, you, you can clearly see that they had to believe in him because they thought he was a ghost when he walked on water and also when he resurrected and he appeared to them. Uh, he, he basically had to prove that he wasn't a ghost. He told them to touch him and look at the wounds that was in his hands to show that he wasn't a ghost. So the disciples clearly believed in ghosts. All right, so there's nothing strange. There's no, nothing wrong with believing in ghosts. But I hope uh, by the end of this discussion, you have more insight. And maybe your mind may change, or it may not. But we'll see how it goes. So ghosts commonly are viewed as the spirits of loved ones or strangers who still exist in and can interact with this plane, with this plane of existence, this physical world. All right? Some people believe ghosts are demons. They don't believe they're spirits of loved ones who have gone on. They believe ghosts are actually demons. Some people believe there's no such thing as ghosts. Some people believe it's completely preposterous that ghosts, demons, or angels exist. All right, you have some people who believe that. All right, uh, these are some statistics. 45% of Americans express a belief in ghosts. All right, and about four in 10 adults think that ghosts can come back and haunt people or places. And for some reason, women are more likely than men to, to hold this belief. More than one third of Americans, 36%, say that they have personally felt the presence of a spirit or ghost. Once again, women are more likely to believe this than men. And then 13% of Americans say that they have communicated directly with a ghost or a spirit of someone who has died. So we see uh, on this table to the left, we see. Uh, 46% of people believe in supernatural beings and uh, close 45% for demons and ghosts. And then we see a huge drop off with stuff such as vampires. Okay, so this is just showing you uh, generally what a lot of people believe about ghosts. Uh, a lot of people too uh, believe that there's no such thing as ghosts and they believe what we call demonic possession or demons is really a manifestation of some kind of mental order or illness and disease. So a lot of times we see uh, in these movies and Hollywood movies, or when we hear about accounts of demon possessed persons, uh, we see them doing things uh, that don't make sense or that are out of the ordinary. But scientists and a lot of persons would say it's not a demon possession. It's one of these disorders that you see uh, here. So we have uh, schizophrenia, we have Tourette syndrome, we have Huntington's disease, narcissistic personality disorder, bipolar disorder. Uh, it's not here, but uh, epilepsy, uh, the disease that causes seizures. All these different mental illnesses manifest in the same way we see a lot of times uh, persons who are said to be demon possessed act. We see persons harming themselves, uh, convulsing, foaming at the mouth, hallucinating, all of these things uh, which are attributed or have been attributed to demons in classical times, modern uh, scientists and critics are saying it's actually a mental illness or disorder. So 1300 years ago, if someone uh, like to cut themselves and they scream and they shriek and they, their mood swings, uh, a lot. A lot of persons would say, oh, that person is demon possessed. They'll go find a priest and say, uh, conduct an exorcism to get rid of that demon. But scientists are saying now uh, uh, that's false. And that person just had a mental disorder that wasn't able to be diagnosed due to not having the specific, uh, the specific science at that time. So a lot of persons hold this belief as well as there's no, uh, uh, there's no demons. Demons cannot possess people. And all these manifestations of things that look like demonic possession are actually just uh, psychological disorders. But um, we do know that demonic possession has occurred and it's referenced, documented in the Bible uh, in numerous instances. But we'll explore uh, this some more as we, as we go through the discussion. So now I want to hear your opinions on ghosts and demons. If you have any questions on anything I've said so far, or you want to share your experiences, or say what you believe, or comment on anything that I've said so far, uh, now is the time for you to do so.
criminals like the play crazy a lot and say audience oh, get possessed by demons when they just be doing their crimes. Yes, who is that? What is Rishian? Uh, very good point, Rishian. Yes, criminals, uh, they of their own wickedness, they go and commit some crime and then they attribute it to some demon uh, uh, possessing them to do such. Um, one of the movies I had shown there, Amityville Horror, the Amityville Horror, I don't know if any of you watched it, but it's based on a true story of this man who killed his entire family, his siblings and his parents with a shotgun. And he said the, that Satan told him to do it. And this true story is what actually inspired uh, the events of the Amityville Horror. Any other comments? Um. I don't know, but I don't think, I don't think, like, ghosts or demons as possessed people. Speak a little louder and louder. At least if it does happen, I don't think it happens that often anymore, at least. I say, if, it, if I say, I don't think demons and ghosts and stuff like that, I don't think they would possess people if, if, uh, like, if they are real, I don't think they would possess people like that anymore. Or have them do certain things that other people like commit a bunch of murders. Mm -hmm. Okay, appreciate that. Anyone else? What's your yeah. opinion? So, like, what about mediums? Like, people who say they communicate with the dead, or uh, like come to someone and be like, some a dead person told me to tell you this, or uh, like stuff like that. Like, what's your belief on like mediums or? If you can touch on that later and stuff like that. Yeah, I can touch on that uh, uh, soon. Uh, uh -huh. With a specific example, too, uh, from the Bible. So, yeah, I can touch on that uh, shortly. Uh -huh. But anyone has, has any experience with uh, the supernatural? Maybe felt that they was being haunted at one point? Maybe saw something, heard something? Talk to I them. got... I, um... My, uh... My friends, um, they are, uh, like, two of them. Two, two ladies, their old man passed. Uh -huh. And one of them was telling me how, like, like he was in the house gang <laughs> after he passed. And how, like, he was just, like, all through the house and, like, walking and, like, you could hear, like, footsteps coming. And then he'd, like, she, she'd ask someone in the house if they was, like, around or something like that, but they wasn't there. And then, like, her cousins were staying over from, like, Freeport. And they say they experienced the same thing too. They was like, but they held like footsteps and then they go in there and no one was there. Cause like, I mean, it's a big house. Let's say like everybody was downstairs and then like you have footsteps upstairs. You go check the rooms and ain't no one in there. I mean, you know, um, and then like, um, I think she'd have mentioned something about pulling toe or something like that. Um, or uh, like how well her, I think she was saying whole man say it feel like he put, he told us getting pulled or something like that. And I think like old people kind of speak to that when the dead kind of calling you to come or something like that. I don't know. Yeah. But that's that's been kind of my experience from like that's like what I heard from Brent. All right, appreciate your comment. Anyone else? Okay, so uh, I had uh, an experience before where I saw something I believe was a ghost. Um, I was much younger and it was like in the middle of the night and I was asleep and I just rolled over because I felt like somebody was watching me. So I looked over at the door and like I saw the outline of a person. So I thought it was my dad because um, he would normally check in during the night to make sure everything's straight. So I thought it was him. So like I opened my eyes like extra wide to make sure and I was trying to knock Kristen to wake her up. So I called my dad's name to see if he would respond because I was trying to figure out why he just standing there like that. Um, and I never got a response. And the image like remained at the door. So I just put the sheet over my head. And the following morning when I asked my dad if he came um, by the room door last night and he was like, no. So to this day, I don't know what I saw. Uh, but... hello, hello, Savannah. Yeah. I, 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 hope you get, I hope you get over that deep, deep dream you had. Uh... No, I wasn't. 
Like, like, I was awake, and I was trying to knock Kristen to wake her up, so I know I was I was awake for sure. Well, it's it's interesting. I don't want to I don't want to dismiss it dismiss it like that. Uh, so I, I take seriously your comments. Boy, well, Landy, I don't know you're gonna deal with this one. You got to you have a good summary here. Let me just put it on the table. My mom, I've heard my mom talk about um, uh, when she sleeps, she dreams. And she has the same dream. Um, she used to be a janitress way back in the day. But mm -hmm. her, her friends, a janit janitress friends, she said, she don't know why they don't stop bothering her every time she dreams. So she dreams about them constantly. And she uh, talks about them as if there, there was this intentional um, bothering of her through her dreams. It's interesting. I put it on the table. Okay. Are her friends alive? Are they alive? Uh, some of them have died. Uh, the, the, um, my mom is near 80, and she. some of them have died now. But yeah. she talks as if they visit her in a dream. Maybe because she's reflecting a lot, thinking about the old days a lot, et cetera, et cetera. That has to play on the mind, too. Mm -hmm. All right. I definitely could relate to what Savannah said. I've had that experience uh, multiple times uh, where I've seen images. Uh, they've moved, they've interacted with me, and I couldn't tell. I know I was wide awake. I was in sleep, but I couldn't really make out what the image was. I could definitely uh, relate to having seen uh, some force that seemed uh, supernatural. Uh, anyone else before we move on? Hi, um, an experience I've had, um, well, this was recent, like during um, quarantine or whatever, I would be hearing sounds outside of my door, like um, light switch switching on and off repeatedly in several different rooms. Like I stayed up for the whole night because I was scared. And then a um, couple nights after that, I heard footsteps in my ceiling and I, I don't know, I had to get a nightlight and I still have it. Because that, that, that was weird. Uh -huh. All right. Yeah, hopefully, uh, the flickering of the lights was just EPL, not a ghost. But yeah, that sounds spooky to me. Um, the next thing that came to mind uh, as you all were speaking was uh, this phenomenon of being held out. I sure we all, well, not we all, I'm not say we all, but I sure a few of us had the later having been pulled down for in our sleep, where we awake, but we can't move, and we feel like this force or this presence on us. And it's quite terrifying, actually. And people, uh, this isn't a new thing. It's something that's very common and has been common uh, for centuries now, and it's been documented as well. So back in the day, uh, old people would say to oh, that's, that's a demon only you down in your sleep. And demons actually are, has a name. They call it incubus and succubus, uh, one is for the male and one is for the female. So one of the demons is a male demon who holds down females, and one is a female demon who holds down males. But um, persons now, uh, critics would say, it's actually just sleep paralysis, uh, not a demon holding you down. So uh, anyone can relate to being held down before, and how was that experience for you? Um, yeah, I get, I get, uh relate to that. What happened, what happened to me once was I woke up from sleep. It was like, it was daytime and I could, uh, you know, everything was clear. Mm -hmm. And when I woke up, I couldn't move. I couldn't move my neck, my head, nothing, feet, nothing. I didn't feel anything on top of me. It's just that I couldn't move at all. Mm -hmm. And I could move my eyes and every, I could move my eyes at least. And I, and I started there like these footsteps coming toward my door, right? Uh -huh. And I, like, I don't know if y'all ever did this, but like, you could, like, as a kid, you probably like, if you had someone come in, you would know who it is, like, the, like on, when they, what about this? When someone moves, like you could hear them and you could, and you recognize how they, they just move, like their feet pattern like the top of top of their foot. Some people drag their feet. Some people walk past, stuff like that, right? So you know yeah. who it is in the house. So, so I, some, it's like I heard something come to the door, but I didn't recognize the, I didn't recognize like who it was. And so after like a few minutes, I was able to get up 
mm-hmm. and I I went over to my mother's my mother's room and her door was closed and when I went in she was sleeping and no one else was in the house so I walked in through I was trying to see if anyone else was in the house but you know else was there so I didn't know what it was and I just gone back and on my bed and I was like you know and the funny That's thing is I was just talking to someone like the, the night before I was like I want to experience sleep paralysis so yeah Yeah, that's why I have to go to the hospital. That was the experience you were talking about earlier? Yeah. All right, cool. All right, so we can move on uh, now. Yes. So before I go into uh, what the Bible says, let's look quickly at what other denominations believe or teach us the race of humans. So we have the Catholic Church, and the Catholic Church is the, the most prominent denomination featured in um, horror films. And uh, matter of fact, they're actually embarrassed in a lot of these films because uh, usually they are unsuccessful in exercising uh, the demon possessed person on the spirit or the ghost. So they believe that. Uh, you can conjure up the dead, and they forbid their members to do so. And they believe that demons currently possess people, and they do perform exorcisms. And um, so they do believe that um, demons currently possess people, and they believe that they have the power to, to get rid of these demons. Then you have the Jehovah's Witness. Uh, witnesses are against attempts to contact the dead. They state that demons are unclean spirits deceive humans by posing as spirits of the dead. Why? To keep people from worshiping Jehovah in a way that pleases them. So, they don't believe that your loved one, if your auntie died, they don't believe your auntie to come back uh, on the house uh, that, you're, that you're used to live in. They believe that's impossible. But they do believe that a demon could pose as your auntie, take on her form to deceive you. All right, and then you go ask Annie what you need to do or uh, what decisions you need to make and that demon go right there and uh, pollute your mind. So that was interesting to me uh, uh, with the demons posing as um, spirits of the dead. Uh, we can talk about that a little bit more uh, as we go through. Uh, Methodists, uh, they frown on attempts to contact the dead. They do acknowledge that ghosts, this, and the church's official website refers to scriptures like Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy chapter 18, verse 10 to 12, that cause it an abomination to contact their spirits. All right. Then we have the seven day Adventists. Uh, like the Jehovah Witness, they believe death is a universal unconscious sleep period. So they don't believe that any ghosts, as in the definition of ghosts being uh, spirits of loved ones who have died, they don't believe uh, they exist. And then we got the Mormons. It is true that some mediums do contact spirits during seances. In most instances, however, such spirit has manifest themselves are uh, probably the demons or devils who were cast out of heaven in rebellion. Righteous spirits have nothing but contempt and pity for the attempts of mediums they contact with them. So they kind of saying the same thing Jehovah Witness saying, whereas uh, when you go to a seance or you go to a medium and you ask them to bring up the spirit of your auntie, the spirit of your cousin, the spirit of your father, your parent, or whoever, it's not actually your parent that is coming forth. It's a demon who's taken on that form to deceive you. Uh, so that's the beliefs of uh, the, uh, some denominations as it relates to uh, ghosts and demons. All right, so now let's look at what the Bible has to say. Uh, I was shocked. I didn't realize the Bible speaks so much about demons, about uh, spirits, about mediums. It's like so much. All right, so we basically can look at three uh, accounts in the Bible of um, supernatural activities. And then we have some honorable mentions on uh, we look forward, I look forward to hearing uh, some of your comments on uh, things we discuss. So Lorenz, you would have mentioned mediums. Uh, so the first example we have is uh, Saul and the Witch of Endor. 
All right, and this story is found in the book of 1 Samuel, chapter 28. All right, so the witch of Endor was a medium, a female sorcerer who was visited by Saul, who we know was the first king of Israel. Now Saul had made it a law, and he banished all sorcerers and conjurers from his kingdom. All right, and this was in accordance with God's will. We look, if we look uh, in the Old Testament, in the book of Leviticus, in the book of Deuteronomy, there's a lot of condemnation uh, against seeking mediums. God strictly said, do not seek mediums. Anyone who was a medium was to be put to death under Mosaic law. So, so I'll put this law into place, which was in accordance with God's will. Um, but he still went and uh, sought a medium because uh, he had already disobeyed God multiple times, so God had cut off all contact with him. So because he wasn't getting no answers from God, he thought he would go get answers from the dead. And he made a fatal mistake. So he ran with his servants to this, uh, this witch of Lindor, and he asked her to bring up Samuel. All right. And when, when the witch brought up Samuel, or who appeared to be Samuel, the Bible says she, she, she shuddered. She, she screamed basically in shock. So to me, that's saying if, if she was in shock, if, if, if Saul asked her to bring up Samuel, and when Samuel came up, she was in shock, then that tells me uh, not only was she in shock, she was terrified, right? If she was in shock and she was terrified, then that tells me uh, maybe uh, she was faking all before. And now that the real thing has happened, whereas uh, uh, Samuel did come forth, then that's why she was terrified. So anyway, when Samuel came forth, it said, then Saul perceived that it was Samuel. So whenever this ghost or the spirit came forth, Saul recognized the ghost of Samuel. And then it seems to be Samuel because Samuel told Saul, why have you brought me up? And he basically told them that he would die in battle the very next day. And indeed, uh, Saul did die in battle the next day. But we see in this story, uh, uh, Saul doing something that was strictly forbidden by God. That was consulting the medium. Uh, we see that the medium did bring forth the spirit of Samuel. Now, whether the medium was able to do that off of her own, dark powers, or whether God allowed that specifically, I don't know. Uh, any comments on that? What do you think? How do you feel about this story? Have you read it before? What's your thoughts on it? Yeah, Landy, I'm going to jump in, man. They look like they're hesitant. I like, uh, I like what you said with regard to uh, you don't know. I think I know. God allowed mm -hmm. um, so, uh, Samuel to be raised. That, that was the hand of God. Like you said, the median was shocked, taken aback. That was not a, yeah, a yeah, usual right. occurrence. Yeah. Um, so, so God had a hand in that, in that God even prophesied through, I mean, gave Samuel a prophecy from the grave concerning Saul. A median didn't have no hand in that. They was, that she was powerless to do that. God had a hand in that. God allowed Samuel to come forward. Um, I, I think we could be emphatic about that. Okay. I appreciate that, Keith. Yeah. I, hey, Landy. Yo. Hey, you know, it's so funny, right? The medium could go to the graves and find out who the dead people is, but she didn't know who Saul was right in her presence. You know what I mean? Until, 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 until I think he revealed himself. So, I mean, like, like you, I know how, I can't remember all you is, but you remember the lady named Miss Cleo? I heard her name before. That was that uh, sorcerer woman of TV. Mm -hmm. What she did? You remember, you remember that? Huh? I no, I'm that. just saying, like, how, how people could play, they could, huh? Go ahead. No, like how people, all right, like uh, people basically in today's uh, sphere, they play on their emotions. Like you, you want this to happen so bad 
that you feel like this look like your Grammy or people could actually figure you out. So it's a money making thing right now. And yeah. uh, cause you was talking about uh, the spirits, right? But I remember a scripture, I don't, I hope I ain't jumping ahead, but it was a scripture say that, uh, but Keith could probably correct me and, and say it right. But I think it was saying like, like those who, who died will never see under the sun again. Like this, you know, their spirit will never see under the sun again. So, I stopped believing in ghosts and stuff because, you know, in your childhood, you hear stories and whatever. But after I read that scripture, and I I just stopped believing in ghosts and I stopped putting certain stuff in my head because, like, uh, I think that was the guy who said he got high when when he said he had the paralysis. Remember, the day before, he was talking with someone and he said that he wanted to see it. You see what I'm saying? So if you take a survey and you ask the people who get high, who see ghosts, and what did they did leading up to the encounters? Mm-hmm. It would be something playing on the mind. You see what I'm saying? Because it never, yeah. it never happened to me. I actually do some stuff in the graveyard, and I was like, "Boy, you know what I mean?" And I, I, I believe that evil spirits are out there because uh, the devil has his evil spirits. But I don't believe that they walk around in physical form. I believe that they influence you through the things of this system, like the media, the songs we sing. You remember you remember Top Shotters? Yeah. The movie Top Shotters? All right. Yeah. Remember when Top Shotters came out, everybody started talking Jamaican and everyone started acting like them? So what happened was we, we, we took on a role that we saw. So the, the demons went through this entertainment industry and the songs we listen to would be played daily, daily, daily. We take on the character of Satan Tanks. So it ain't like the devil getting into you right now and doing this. You see, so we have the drugs to cause us to do Satan stuff. And we have the entertainment industry that causes us to do Satan stuff. And we have peer pressure because to do Satan stuff. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. And you want to leave it? Yeah, that's fine. All, right. All right. Any other comments? I have a question. So, hold on, hold on, mm-hmm. hold on one second. Disclaimer, I do not have all the answers. I am merely an investigator and someone who's curious just like you, but I will try to answer as best as I can. And if you have the answers. Answer, you know, huh? I don't think you have all the answers. All right, I know, just a disclaimer. Go ahead. So, um, Brother Keith is saying that it was probably God who gave the medium the power to... Um, bring out Saul. Well, not really the power, but basically God was the one who did it. So right. if that's the case and the situation is that the medians don't really have power, then why pass a law to ban them and ban people from going to them if they don't really have any kind of power? Exactly. Exactly. And that's something I that's something I I don't know if you want to rebut that, but that's something I thought about too after I read this story and I went back to the Old Test, uh, the laws. And uh, it's literally so much scriptures that speak to uh, not consulting mediums or spirits and all of this that made me think, okay, there are some dark powers out there that probably can be accessed. But uh, anyway, that's, that's a part of my last discussion. But, but we haven't Landy. seen, but we haven't seen, uh, Landy, I do believe you want me to respond to that. But we but we haven't seen anyone accessing them. They saved the case, saved the situation with Saul and the median, medium. So uh, there's no example of, of individuals conjuring up the dead or making contact with the dead, except this one incident where we see God intervening. Um, um, I, I, you know, they, they were told not to have idols. They were told not to, children of Israel that is, not to, uh, worship idols and go after idols. Um, Paul later would say there's no such thing as an idol. There's only one God. Um, I put that in that same category. God forbids his people to go and trust in another source, which is really a form of idolatry when you think about it. Right. So uh, you may Lani. say, yeah, go Dario. Yeah, okay. So uh, in reference to the young lady, right? Uh, she was saying that if the mediums are not true, why ban them, right? Now, let's say the mediums been around for years. 
they could have want them to be banished because of the influence they had on the local people. You see what I'm saying? You ever see you go on somewhere and this person just look like sin, he look like a demon, he look like a witch, and you just shun them because the fright that come in you. So they could have had, you know what it is, they walk in a shop. And the shop wanna start giving them stuff free because of the old the old stories that was passed down on, on the power that these people had to turn you into a frog or to kill you and your whole family. So it could have been a fear that the people was imposing on on this on this town. And Saul, I don't know if Saul was a man of God. I guess he was a man of God if he was under the tutelage of Samuel. So Saul banished them. So it wouldn't be no competition with, with the faith. I'm I'm I am i am supposing. You see, because what happened is sometimes the, even the appearance of people could have a fear in you. I remember one time I was on the bus and I was uh, you know, a government houses. So these Muslims came on the bus. These Muslims came on the bus and they they had their, their face and everything covered. And three of them came on the bus in Allah. And my, I thought my hour would reach, but I, I had a panic attack, right? And they come right in the back, right? But because of my lack of knowledge, I was afraid. So what I'm saying is that when you see a Muslim woman covered like that, that means she married. You see what I'm saying? So it was my fear. It was the fear that they had on me caused me to react a certain way. So that's banished the mediums because of the fear they might be imposing on, on the downsman. What do you think? Yeah, that's a valid point. Um, but even said, okay, so what I saw in my uh, search in the scriptures in Leviticus and Deuteronomy, uh, God, and uh, we can look at some of them scriptures later too, but God gave a strict forbiddance uh, to the children of Israel from seeking out mediums, um, spiritists, cultists, and all of them. And one of the scriptures, I can't remember exactly uh, which scripture, but it, it in this PowerPoint, so we'll see it uh, soon enough. But it said, uh, why, why consult the dead about the living? So with that scripture and other scriptures, it seems to hint that there's some possibility that you could, which uh, God is saying is wrong to do so. But that's just a thought, all right? Any, any final comments before we move on? Yeah, I wanted to say um, the mediums, it's it's funny how times have changed. Um, I don't know what period it was, but, you know, there was the Long Island medium. There was and one on a YouTube as well, who was a well-known celebrity medium. And um, one of, you can clearly tell that they're doing it for the money. So I, and some of these people are well known. Um, you can easily search them up, find some background info and kind of go off of that. So, mm -hmm. I mean, there's always been a bit of skepticism in that department, but it's different with those types of mediums. Cause you, you know, it's just, um, it's just all for entertainment. But um, if I were to come across a child in a rural area who I don't expect to know me at all, I'm not a well-known person, and they all of a sudden come and tell me that such and such, you know, is the name of such and such who has passed on. And I don't know this person, this person doesn't know me. They're obviously, um, they're, they're quite young. They don't, they're not doing it for any money or any particular reason. They just happen to tell me this. Then I feel like that's a more, I guess, believable occurrence. Mm -hmm. um, why that happens? Why some people are, in, like some people say they, they're born with the skill, they could see the dead, they can't control it or whatever. Um, I feel like that might be possible um, but what they choose to do with it is up to them. And clearly, I mean, you see in scripture that, um, like how, no, clearly what you said just now, um, uh, that, that kind of makes sense that people can have the ability, you know, for some whatever reason, however their brains are wired. Um, but they don't have to tap into that skill. You know, 
So, I mean, I, I don't disown it completely, but um, it all depends on the circumstances and um, situation that determines whether also, or not I believe in it or not. Okay. Also to what Heidi was saying, I feel like, I feel like in the same, well, I feel like the devil himself has power and all these demonic stuff and different stuff like that. I feel like he could give certain demonic powers maybe because i don't know the stuff i've heard the like honestly like i've heard some stuff and people talking about oh they do this and they do that it's like it's it makes me question like did the devil give them that you know demonic power because i've heard some demonic stuff so you know does the devil give power in that in that sense like does, is he giving the world like in that demonic Sense. All right. I uh, appreciate that, uh, Deja and Heidi. The devil, the devil definitely does have power. Uh, we can talk about that some more shortly, too. And I do believe that he, uh, he uses that power and he gives persons access to that power uh, to carry out uh, whatever wicked deeds that he sees fit. But there's still a supreme power that everyone, including the devil himself, can see and too, and that's God. But we'll explore uh, all of those uh, things you all say um, some more as we go through it. All right, so the second son, uh, I want us to look at, it doesn't have anything to do with uh, uh, medium or the ghost, but it has to do with a demonic possession. We all know about this story uh, about Jesus, Find it in Mark chapter 5 and Luke chapter 8. Uh, so basically, in the story, we have uh, Jesus coming to the region of the Pharisees, uh, sometimes called the Gathering. There's a few opinions, uh, depending on which gospel you're looking at. And he meets this man uh, who's possessed with Legion, and the demon identifies himself as Legion and says, For oh, we are men. That's how much demons. Uh, this particular person. And uh, it's, it's, it's a couple of interesting things to notice about uh, this story. Uh, first of all, we see uh, the person, he lived in tombs and he didn't wear clothes. Uh, he had immense strength, uh, he was naked. But when he sees Jesus, he cries out, he falls at his feet and shouts in the top of his voice, what do you want with me, Jesus? Son of the Most High God, I beg you, don't touch me. So we could take from uh, this scripture here that even the demons, uh, with the power that they do have, um, they know who in charge. They know who's the chief. The demon fell at Jesus' feet, which shows submission. All right, which shows uh, that he knows he's subordinate and he begs Jesus not to touch him. And Jesus uh, asked him his name, and then he uh, ordered them to leave the man. And the demons begged if they could go into side, go inside a herd of swine, a herd of pigs. And immediately when they went into the pigs, the pigs all ran and drowned themselves. All right. And the demon uh, possessed man, it said he was left cured at Jesus' feet. And he actually asked Jesus if he could come along with him on his travels. And Jesus said, uh, no, return home and tell uh, people how much God has done for you. All right, so what is interesting about this story is, first of all, uh, the demon's response to seeing Jesus. And then uh, Jesus uh, exercising the demon. The demons, there was multiple demons inside this man. And then when Jesus told, uh, Demand to do after the fact. He said to return home and tell the people how much God has done for you. And we see uh, multiple other accounts in the New Testament of Jesus casting out demons. Uh, we also see the apostles doing the same. Uh, but we do know that demons do or have possessed persons in the past. Right? Any um, comments on this? No. All right, not really. Uh, 
uh, right along. Now let's talk about the transfiguration. All right, the transfiguration is a crucial uh, part of Jesus's ministry on earth, uh, where he was transfigured uh, before Peter, James, and John, who uh, people like to call his favorite uh, disciples. And we find this in the book of Matthew, Mark, and Luke. And what's interesting about the transfiguration is we see appearing along with Jesus on this mountain. Elijah and Moses. Now we know Elijah never saw a physical death. He was carried up in a chariot uh, and, and he was carried up in a whirlwind. Uh, and we know Moses died and God on very Moses himself. So we see these two figures from the Old Testament Elijah who never saw death and then uh, Moses appearing with Jesus. And it's interesting because. Um, very fact that we have these uh, these ancient figures who would have lived hundreds of years uh, before the time of Jesus. And, yeah. All right, so we find in Mark chapter nine, uh, verse two to eight, a count of what happens. So Elijah and Moses appeared before Jesus, and uh, Peter and his past self. You no, know, Peter always the quickest to say something or comment without really thinking. He said, it's good for us to be here. Let us put three shelters, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. And a loud voice said, this is my son, whom I love. Listen to him. And when they looked around, suddenly there was no one there except Jesus. And as they were coming down the mountain, Jesus gave them strict instructions not to tell anyone what they had seen until Jesus had risen from the dead. So, um, the spirit of uh, Moses appeared uh, uh, at the transfiguration scene of Jesus. So where was Moses uh, before this? We know that Moses died. His death is uh, recorded in the Bible. Uh, but he appeared here with Jesus uh, along with uh, Elijah. So where do you think Moses was? And where Elijah was, where did they come from? Anyone? They were in the place of rest. Right. Okay, yes. Yeah, so they were in the place of rest. Uh, it is uh, commonly believed, and we see it uh, based on scriptures, uh, when, uh, um, uh, when uh, someone dies, their spirit goes to a place uh, where they await judgment. And we see in the parable of Lazarus and rich man, uh, one person, I mean, Lazarus went to uh, Abraham's bosom or paradise, and we see um, the rich man went to a place of torment where he would await uh, his final condemnation. We also see when Jesus was on the cross, he told the thief on the side, and today he would be in paradise. So we have this idea that uh, Hades, the uh, place of the dead, is um, where uh, spirits, disembodied spirits, a person who were once alive go, and there they await judgment. But in the in the parable with Lazarus and the rich man, it speaks of a chasm dividing uh, where Lazarus was uh, from where the rich man was, and no one could cross that that chasm. And from what my reading uh, from the Transfiguration and uh, that account, that parable. And a lot of other scriptures, I come to the conclusion that when a person dies, there's no way that they can still exist in this plane. All right. The only way that someone can come forth is if uh, God intervenes and allows it. So Moses and Elijah, I believe, were brought from paradise to speak to Jesus concerning uh, the things he would face uh, in the coming days, weeks. Uh, so I believe that that uh, kind of dispels the idea that ghosts, in terms of spirits of persons um, who were uh, once alive, uh, can still exist in this plane. Because once you die, you go to that place, don't we? 
the judge would be. Uh, any comments? No? All right. So I want to talk about some honorable mentions. Uh, this kind, uh, the first one is Moses and Aaron versus the Egyptian. And this one kind of speaks to what Tasha was talking about, about um, there being some dark powers in the world. And I do believe that uh, dark powers do exist. I do believe a person potentially can access them. But once again, uh, these powers subordinate to God's power. With Moses and Aaron and the Egyptian uh, magicians, there's uh, two uh, different schools of thought as to uh, this uh, situation. Uh, in the story uh, found in Exodus chapter 7, we see uh, the Egyptian magicians. They weren't named in Exodus, but they were named in Timothy. I can't remember whether it was first or second Timothy. But the name was Janus and Jambres. And these magicians actually turned their rods into snakes. All right, they called on whatever powers. One school of thought believes that they called on whatever powers they had, and they were able to turn their rods into snakes. And then Moses and Aaron turned their rods into snakes, and their snakes ate the snakes of these Egyptian magicians, which showed that God's power was superior to the dark power. So some people believe that the Egyptian magicians had no power at all, and that God just allowed uh, their sticks to turn into snakes, and then to show his greater power, he then allowed Aaron and Moses' stick to turn into a snake that then consumed their snake. And then some people believe that they did have some power, and they were able to turn their rods into snakes, which is clearly supernatural, but God's power was just greater, and that's why Moses and Aaron's rod turned snakes, was able to eat their own. Uh, what are your thoughts on that? Which school of thought you more identify with? Or you may have your conclusion that's different from those two. Well, um, I feel like the same thing that Udeja was talking about, about like how the devil could like literally give people powers. I think that might have been the case where the devil kind of like bestowed upon them that kind of power and they were using it in whichever way that they pleased and then god obviously came to intervene to show that he was obviously better hmm. i appreciate that anyone else keith what say you i say that there's no power but god's power um i i, I do believe it's interesting that you mentioned that uh, that view on Janus and Jambres, uh, in that God allowed them to, you know, their snakes to turn into, I mean, their rods to turn into snakes, and the superior snakes uh, from Moses, or through Moses, ate their snakes up. That's an interesting take. Uh, I think I kind of lean towards that uh, versus them having power. Listen, um, I, you're going to get to this. I hope you get to this. If you maintain that people can be demon possessed today, then you must also maintain that the power to cast demons exists today, else God presents himself as unfair. Yeah, I get it. Okay, all right. Yeah. Also, also with regard to your sorcery, um, uh, I don't know if you're going to get to Simon the Sorcerer, but here is a medium in the New Testament who really bewitched the people, right. who, who deceived the people. He had no power of, of, of himself. It's when he saw the real power. That is when he really was attached to Peter and John and desired to, you know, purchase that ability. That's an interesting read too, all right? Um, also, you left, well, you, you gave me talking now. Also, you left um, Lazarus and the rich man, but it's interesting in that text, the rich man wanted Lazarus to go back and basically it wasn't permitted. What, Abraham told him is that they have the law and the prophets. Right. Right. In other words, there's that concept of someone going back from the dead, and it was it wasn't permitted. Right. And he said, even if someone was to went back from the dead, if they wouldn't believe, they wouldn't exactly. believe. They didn't believe the law and the prophets, then they didn't believe. Exactly. 
Yeah. So, that, so that highlights to me what we really need to cling to. The, God's word. And of course, Jesus Christ today, who completes the Old Testament and who allows us to walk uh, under the New Testament. All right, so keep saying Janice and Jambres don't have any power, not even dark powers of their own. You see, yes, that's what I'm saying, because the question is, how much dark powers do they have? How do you access the dark power? You understand what I'm saying? I, I, your, your theology, your theology is going to be challenged if you say it exists. Now, the question is, well, if it exists, how do I access it? How much dark power exists? Blah, blah, blah. And I, I don't want to dismiss people's experiences because that's what they are, whether they are imagined or whatever. But at the same time, you would, you would see that, that everything falls back to the word. You remember, Abraham said they have the law and the prophets. So that there is the center and the fundamental thing that we must always right. do. Uh, I appreciate that. Any other comments? Hey, Landy. Yeah. Uh, I remember I had a discussion with two guys from a church on Kamaika. And what they were saying is that they, I mean, this church is known for casting out demons. I mean, some of my curfew, so I don't know how long you take to address this matter because I soon got to go. But what happened is this church, uh, they, they famous for inspiring people to cast out demons. And they say they see demons and they do all this. You see what I'm saying? Everyone who go to this church have the same belief. Even when I was living home and my big sister was living home, uh, we was on the back patio, just chilling out on the lounge stairs, right? And all we see is when she speed out through the kitchen door, right? She shoot out through the kitchen door, <laughs> bounce off the fence, right? And shoot down the back of the yard with some olive oil. Say she casting out demon, right? And you believe, I think I just mentioned this to her again this year. You see what I'm saying? So I know that the, this, this, this world system is Satan's system. Remember, that's why you could offer Jesus anything. If you just, you know, do, do whatever I tell you do. Hey, you want that? You want this? You could, you could have it because this is his system. You see what I'm saying? So now, Brother Keith was saying, like, uh, with the two names you're called, Brother Keith was saying he don't believe that Satan's power is, is real in this world. That's what he's saying? He's saying it ain't accessible by man. I no think. problem. But, but his influence on man is just as dangerous. Yeah. You I see like what that. I'm saying? So his power might not be accessible by man, but his influence on man today, when you see a fellow... Uh, cut up his whole, all his children. And when you see someone go drive their, their, their children into the ocean, see, I could play on your mind through depression. I could play on your mind through anger. So my influence alone is just as dangerous. You see, so when, when Satan passed this, all right, they were telling me that, hey, you all don't talk in tongues. You all don't cast out demon. You all don't do certain things, so you all you all limiting the power of God. You all churches limit the power. That's what they were telling me, and everyone who I talk to from that church would tell me the same thing: that we limit the power of God. Now, the way they rig their scriptures and stuff like that caused them to. All right, one of my boys was telling me about a fivefold government in that in their church, what was in the scriptures. Right, but when I break down baptism to him, he could he figure out that hey, he even ain't saved. And his his brother had to tell him, but you won't save because you won't baptize. You see what I'm saying? So you you come to me with a five-fold government and how you all church running at that time, they your church didn't even wasn't concerned about you being baptized. You were just a faithful, a faithful contributor. You see, so we gotta be careful on who we allow to uh, talk to us and you know, because the freedom of the media and all this other stuff. You just got to be careful, boy, because like, not every smile and face mean you good. And because uh, some of the worst people in the world are some of the people who believe in Christ, boy. You see what I'm saying? Like my old lady, she have a problem. My old lady problem is as long as you come in the name of Jesus Christ, you save. Like she had posts like different prayers in the chat group. And I say, sister, hold for him. Take your time. I say, I don't know them people. I know you. And I know the God you save and all the prayers you offer up for me. But these funny kind of people. So... You can't have, I remember to work, we'd always have this old man and he used to bug me, but he come in the bathroom. You you cleaning up yourself, right? And 
he won't hold on and pray. And I'd be like, boy, I said to him, I said, the next time this boy run up on me, how come you always got to pray for people? I don't know what type of thing you, the same thoughts would run across my mind, I'd run across your mind. But the way I deal with my, my sins, you might not deal with your sins. So don't touch me. Don't pray for me. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So we got to be careful, boy. The, the, the influence of, of, of everything around us in this Satan system. Satan is the king of the system, boy. You know? Yeah. Yeah, let me just interject here. I, I, let's be clear, and I'm going to let you run the, your, uh, your program, Landy. Um, the, the, uh, definitely, I agree that Satan influences. I mean, you know, the Bible says, resist the devil and he will flee. Why? Because he wants to influence. He influences. However, I think we need to be careful on what, uh, um, about the, the, the powers that we, we say exist today. Um, um, and be careful of the, what you give to him. The Bible says, greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Um, Satan is a defeated foe, um, and he knows it. And God empowers us to live a victorious life through Jesus Christ, to defeat all of the forces of darkness. Um, um, we could go on and on with regard to, does, do, do gifts of miracles exist today? Uh, if, if our denominational friends insist that they can speak in tongues and cast out demons, they, they must also be consistent with scripture and, and say they could raise the dead and they could drink deadly, deadly poisons. Um, and time and time again, we see that they really, they really are falling short of, the, of, of biblical miracles. They're falling short of the criteria for biblical miracles and biblical gifts. Um, uh, we know that these gifts have of cease according to first Corinthians chapter 13. Um, they, were, they were put there for a reason to establish God's word, to confirm God's word. Now that God's word is confirmed and established, the word does not need to be reconfirmed and reestablished. It has already been established. And we could go on and on. Right. So I, I, I like that point you made. Uh, uh, I can speak to that right now too. Um, we know like like you said in the age of the apostles, and in Jesus' time, um, you had many instances of persons who were possessed. Uh, Mary Magdalene, you see in Mark chapter 16, uh, Luke chapter 8, that she had seven demons uh, taken out of her. And we know the apostles were given the power to cast out demons and to do the other signs and wonders you just mentioned. But if that age has ended, the age of miracles, the age of signs and wonders, it would kind of be unfair for demons to still be able to possess persons in the way they did uh, during that time, if the power to remove them as they were removed in that time uh, no longer um, uh, uh, is available to man. So that, that to me uh, kind of discredits uh, the fact that demons do possess persons in the way they did uh, as we see in the Bible. Because that power to remove them um, is no longer, the power exists, of course, but we do not possess that power now. So I don't think that demons could do as they did during the New Testament, where the very powers to cast out demons and do other wondrous things uh, no longer exist. Um, in uh, the book of Acts, chapter 19, we have uh, seven sons of Sceva and the demon. The demon, the demon, demonic, the beast, who? Demoniac, all right? This, this was a person who was possessed by demons, and Sceva was a Jewish high priest, and he had seven sons who attempted to cast out this demon, and the demon said, Jesus, I know. They tried to cast out the demon in the name of Jesus, and the demon said, Jesus, I know, uh, Paul, I know, but who are you? And then the demon then proceeded to beat all seven of those men, brutally, uh, where they had to run out of the house naked and bleeding. All right, so we see, um, they, we don't see these type of things happening uh, now that we see, uh, that we see happening in the Bible. Persons who were possessed by demons, they could be bound with chains and they would still break those chains. Uh, they had super strength. Uh, if a demon could beat, one demon possessed person could beat seven persons to a pulp, bloody, uh, and running for their life. 
Uh, we don't see that happening now with the persons who are claiming to be uh, demon possessed. So that's another interesting uh, thing to uh, consider. Uh, we have Elimus, who was a sorcerer, and Paul. And he was a consultant. Uh, Elimus was a consultant to Sergius Paulus. And Paul was trying to preach the gospel to this man, and Elimus was trying to prevent it. And Paul struck him blind uh, as, a, as a punishment. But he was a sorcerer, but we see he was powerless as well too. And then uh, as Keith mentioned, Simon the sorcerer, uh, he was uh, bewitching the people, he was fooling them, uh, sorcerers, and a lot of the uh, modern day magicians, we see today too, they, they use these tactics to deceive and trick people. And when Simon saw the real thing, he wanted to purchase it, he wanted to purchase his power, and he was rebuked uh, by Peter and John. I see the chat with the get on fire now. Let me just check what's going on there. Uh, yeah, okay. Yeah, so basically, uh, they speak into the fact that the signs and wonders that we saw inside the New Testament uh, is no longer being manifested today. Uh, in the New Testament, when persons spoke in tongues, they spoke a literal language. Uh, that person who speak that tongue uh, could understand. So for me to believe that someone could speak in tongues today, they would have had to never been to China, never study any Chinese language, any Jewish or Hebrew language, any um, Portuguese, Spanish, French, and they get up and start speaking all these different languages to everyone uh, to understand. We don't see that happening now with persons who can speak in tongues. They just Rant, uh, random they nonsense. sound like they speak in gibberish. It don't be no type of language whatsoever. <laughs> exactly. It sounds just like that. Foolishness. All right. And then also, if you think of it, uh, all the other uh, wondrous signs and things, uh, you don't see it happen. You don't see someone's broken hand uh, being restored. You don't see someone blind receiving sight. All the miracles, quote unquote, miracles being performed today. Uh, first of all, it's not instantaneous. It always requires some extended period of time, and it's always discreet. Only uh, a select few persons are uh, made aware of it. We don't see that inside the um, inside the New Testament. But all the miracles that were performed, uh, huge multitudes multitudes of persons were aware. And even when it was done just to that person, they were told to go and tell or to go and show themselves. If you think of the leper, the lepers who came to Jesus, or if you think about um, even Legion that we just mentioned, he was told to go and show. All right, so it's, it, it's consistent to think that since that age of being able to cast out demons and do all these wondrous things um, has ended, then so has uh, demons uh, being able to possess and influence people in that way, uh, we, could, we could conclude that that has ended as well. Um, any other comments before we go forward? So I have a question. So Where? if like, <clears throat> so we've seen like a lot of the horror movies today always start out saying that like this is based on a true story or whatever whatever mm -hmm. and um some of them are and some of them aren't um how do you explain stuff like that for example there's this movie i really can't remember what it's called it's the possession of somebody i can't remember emily, but not, not emily rosie something like that but you know what i'm talking about yeah. and they had like actual pictures in history of like her floating off her bed and thing and um, of the people who exercised them, they had like a bunch of documentation. So how do you explain stuff like that? If like a bunch of witnesses say, this happened for real and I saw it with my own two eyes. Like how do you debunk stuff like that? If you saying that like people can't be possessed. In that way, no more. In that way, right. All right, so I don't know about the floating of the bed. That's... I, I have to look at that, uh, research that. 
But I know uh, some of the other things that you probably see, and of course Hollywood exaggerates um, what actually was, what actually is reality. Hollywood exaggerates it, but uh, what, what, what we typically see inside uh, these movies that depict these exorcisms and these demonic possessions, whether they're some I see, uh, uh, you could go after they finish. But we see the actions that these persons do, who claim to be, uh, who are possessed, is not uh, concurrent with what we see in the Bible in terms of possession. Um, like I say, a patient of the floating off the bed and stuff that I can't speak to that. But other things that persons do that people typically attribute to demonic possession, for example, cutting themselves, screaming, uh, hallucinating and seeing other, uh, seeing other things, talking to themselves, uh, uh, periods of rage and mood swings, stuff like that, uh, or saying that there are demons in them. All of these can be symptoms of different uh, psychological disorders. Uh, Samson, yes, you can go ahead. Hey, Landy. Yeah. Uh, she, said key, she said the key word. She said Hollywood. You know, all right, Hollywood have right now, everybody's scared of sharks in the water, right? Hollywood have us worshiping a white Jesus. Like Hollywood really play a major role in a lot of the things, a lot of the fears that people have, you know. You see what I'm saying? Some people scared of the dark because they watch a horror. And it's just, it's just the fact that, that, that we got to be careful what we put in. So if I know I go and dive in tomorrow, the last thing I can do is watch a shark movie. The last thing I can do is watch Jaws or, or, or some crazy stuff. You know what I mean? I remember one time, like, we, we was riding on an island on some bicycles. It was three bicycles, right? And what happened was my boy was telling us a story with this fella named Wag. Say, Wag and the Buccaneers. Say, he, what he used to do is hold you down. He had three fingers cut off, and he hold you down and put... He three he three knocks in your mouth and beats you and all that. So you can picture us eleven o'clock in the night riding on the dark day road and speeding, the fear and adrenaline alone. We these things you gotta be careful what you allow to fest in the mind, but because all right, that one story about that that lady rising, you would be surprised how that gets spread like that. And it just passed down through history. You see what I'm saying? It's like we, we, we play on emotions and we play on all these different things. And then, like Hitler say, you tell him a lie for so long, it become the truth. So, you know, I didn't have no proof that she, you know, and they didn't have no Photoshop on the picture that time. They have, have a rise and will you be surprised what kick up, what gone on, you know? All right. So with, with the point of uh, Photoshop, even, uh, even a lot of old photos from when they didn't have the technology to Photoshop back then, you have the technology now where you can alter images. Uh, and even, even, even to that point, though, um, little photography knowledge, back in the day, back, dating back to, I believe, the 1800s, when they first got out the first camera, the, yes, they didn't have Photoshop, but they had this process called layering. So they would get one or two or three photos, and they will put them together as a layer. And so it's similar to Photoshop. It's just that they didn't have the digital technology, but they would still manipulate pictures. And so oh. you would be surprised. They had Photoshop, but it wasn't the Photoshop we think of today. It was a, a manual process, but they would layer those photos to create a, an illusion and different stuff like that. So, yeah, they did have it back in the day. Right. So I just Googled um, Emily Rose, uh, Keisha, which she was talking about. Well, that might not have been the one you was talking about because her, her case was a more recent one. But she had she was suffering from temporal lobe epilepsy in the movie The Exorcism of Emily Rose is loosely based on her life. But uh, even though she was diagnosed with temporal lobe epilepsy, uh, her parents believed that she was possessed by a demon. And so they put her through all these exorcisms. And when I was researching this topic, um, I also found too that a lot of persons die in the process of exorcisms, supposed exorcisms, uh, because they they uh, they do a lot of uh, 
contrary things to these persons in these uh, exorcism processes, where they end up actually killing the person in the name sake of trying to uh, um, get the demon out of them. And then when they do um, autopsies on these persons, they end up finding out that a lot of them just had uh, serious uh, mental issues and illnesses. And like I said, these illnesses uh, cause persons to do things that you would uh, think is uh, demon possession. So a lot of persons, unfortunately, have lost their lives uh, because they've suffered the abuse that is undergone when you get an exorcism, when really and truly they just had a mental disorder that was undiagnosed and unaddressed. Uh, any other comments before we go forward? You? All right, so let's talk more about the, what the Bible has to say. And uh, what I get definitely is the power of uh, darkness is to exist. So we know demons are real. Demons were objects of worship in the Bible. Uh, we see uh, this in Leviticus chapter 17, verse 7. Uh, Deuteronomy 32 and 17, Psalms 106 and 37, 1 Corinthians 20 to 21, and 1 Timothy 4 and 1. All these scriptures speak to uh, demonic persons being actually worship demons. The New Testament also records the existence of demons with the word occurring in six verses. In most cases, the demons are objects of God's power to be cast out of men for God's own glory. So this kind of speaks to the point that uh, he was making uh, when he said he believes that that was God's power that allowed uh, Janus and Jambus' gods to become snakes, only to show that his power is superior when uh, uh, Moses and Aaron's snake uh, devoured that rod. So most, most times when we see uh, demons uh, mentioned in the New Testament especially, it's them being... Um, cast out by Jesus or the apostle and showing God's authority uh, over them. Next thing I wanted to point out, uh, as it relates to Hollywood, a lot of the Hollywood films, they have these demons or these demon-possessed persons outright blaspheming God, like uh, shunning God, cursing God, just no respect for God. That's, that is fallacious. Uh, we do not see that in scripture. In every instance in scripture, we see demons being extremely respectful of God and uh, submitting themselves because they know. All right, so that's the next inconsistency as it relates to Hollywood and reality that we see uh, in scripture. Uh, this brings up my point. Demons are not all powerful. Hollywood horror movies has given persons the impression that Satan and his demons are as powerful as God himself. But we see otherwise, in Luke 8 and 28, the demons came before Jesus and fell down before him. This is an act of contrition. It is an act of submission. The demon then begged Jesus not to torment him. The word beg translates from the Greek word the alpine, which means the acts of urgency and with an implied need. The demon knew he was subordinate to Jesus and submitted to him. Again, with these persons who claim to be demon possessed today, um, they, they typically, they like curse God. Uh, they do not show any respect or regard to God whatsoever. That's not what we see uh, in scripture when persons were possessed by demons. Uh, demons know and worship the Lord. It is striking to see a demon bowing before Jesus, but that is exactly what uh, the demon did. And they call them by his name. No one who is and even praying and worship of him is simply not sufficient. This echoes James' statement from James 2 and 19, which says, You believe that God is one, you do well. Even the demons believe and shut up. Mere belief apart from obedience is useless. So we see the demons do know God and they, they fear him. Demons have power, but their power is in no comparison to God's mighty power. All right. Uh, like I say, the demons do believe and tremble. We see uh, multiple, multiple instances uh, in the Bible of uh, demons being aware of. Uh, even with the sons of Steve that I mentioned, uh, where the de demon, this man, beat, beat the crap out of those seven sons of Steve the demon said, Jesus I know, Paul I know, but who are you? So these demons know their place. 
All right, we see in Mark chapter one, uh, a man who had an unclean spirit in the synagogue, he said, what have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know you, who you are, the Holy One of God. So the demons, even though they are against God, um, they are aligned with Satan in rebellion against God, they still have a very healthy respect and reverence for him. All right, uh, in Mark chapter 3 and 11, it says, whenever the unclean spirits saw him, they fell down before him and cried out to our Son of God. All right. In Luke chapter 4, we see where one cried out to the Son of God and he, he rebuked them not to speak. So he shut the demon up from even acknowledging him. All right. Uh, in Acts chapter 16, we see this woman who was possessed with a spirit of divination. Now, this demon gave this woman uh the powers to foretell the future okay so that shows me that demons do have power they do have power okay this woman was allowed to tell the future because of her demons but even still she followed paul crying out these men are servants of the most high god who proclaim to the way of salvation so this demon possessed woman telling uh the persons that paul and I, I can't remember if it was Silas or Barnabas at this point, but telling them that they have the, the way of salvation. So the demons themselves can't even be saved, but they recognize. Uh, so long, yeah. Oh yeah. Do you think, do you think um, those, is it tarot card readers? I'm not sure. But like the people that fortune tell and say, oh, let me read your palm and all of that. The people who try to predict your future, do you think that they are quote unquote demon possessed? Like, because it's sad here that, you know, this woman could have told the future and she was demon possessed. Because it's right. like, I think it, well, I think it's a little questionable when people say, okay, let me read your palm and XYZ, you got have five kids and this, that. Like, how you know that? Like, how you could tell me my future, you know? Right. So that kind of goes back to the point I was making where, um, so we know that demons do have power. We know in the New Testament, this power was manifested in a number of ways, whether it be fortune telling or it be su superhuman strength. You know the demons do have power and we know that they possess human beings to, to carry out that power. But the argument is if we as followers of God no longer have the apostles power, which was the cast of demons, to heal the sick, to heal the blind, to do all these things, then if, if we no longer have um, access to that power, then um, it wouldn't be fair for persons to still be able to be possessed by a demon in that way if there's no one here who can actually cast a demon out. So the persons who... So will we just say that they would be influenced by Satan? Because I don't think they would have to have a demon, but will we say that that would be a satanistic realm because they do be saying okay your future is xyz and some people believe it so much but then i don't know if that's a self-fulfilling prophecy they hear yeah. the stuff and then they try they psychologically actually try to make it happen be it a self-fulfilling prophecy i don't know right perhaps that and then also uh, a lot of times these persons they could just be pretending to they could just be making up and then a lot of times they like with the Long Island medium that Heidi mentioned earlier because I used to watch uh, her religiously. And I saw a trend in, in the kind of questions she asks and she even does a little background research before she actually meets up with the person who she going to read and for. But she asks very general questions. And it's, it's a trick in psychology where you could get persons and magicians and these persons, shamans and uh, uh, persons who Claim to have these powers, they use it all the time. They use some reverse psychology and they get you to tell, tell them all the information and then they tell you right back in a different way. And it's spooky, freak you think, make you think, oh yeah, wow, how did you know that? You just told me that. You didn't even realize you tell me that. So she used to ask very general questions and beat around the bush and then hit them exactly what they want to hear. And then they break down crying and they say, oh, this woman, she's the real deal. But the main thing behind this whole thing is deception. All right. Uh, any other comments before I move on? All 
Bible has to say. This is what I was talking about earlier when I was mentioning uh, all the all the laws and all the uh, commandments, uh, warning persons to not seek out mediums, spiritists, necromancers. Right? Leviticus 19 and 31. Do not turn to mediums or necromancers. Do not seek them out and so make yourselves unclean by them. I am the, I am the Lord. That's a very stern and straightforward warning. Then right again in the following chapter, Leviticus 20 and 6, if a person turns to mediums and necromancers, pouring after them, I will set my face against that person and will cut him off from his cut him off from among his people. It's a very stern warning. Isaiah 8 and 19, and again, and when they say to you, inquire of the mediums and necromancers to chirp and mutter, should not a people inquire of their God? Should they inquire of the dead on behalf of the living? So that's the scripture I cited earlier. Why are you inquiring uh, to the dead on behalf of the living? Now, the way this is worded in these three verses here, it makes it seem like it is possible. I don't know. Make it seem like it is possible that you could. But then again, you have to test scripture with scripture and compare scripture with scripture to, to come to a uh, conclusion. In Revelations 21 and 8, it says, But as for the cowardly, the faithless, the detestable, as for murderers, the sexually immoral, sorcerers, idolaters, and all liars, their portion will be in the lake that burns with fire and sulfur, which is the second death. So we see sorcery, or uh, sorcerers mentioned along with these other uh, sins, and all of them being uh, persons who would end up in eternal damnation in hell. All right, uh, Deuteronomy uh, 18, 9 through 12 is another interesting scripture. It says, when you come into the land that your Lord, your God has given you, you shall not learn to follow the abominable practices of those nations. There shall not be found among you anyone who burns his son or his daughter as an offering. Who are they making these offerings to? Demons. Anyone who practices divination or tells fortunes or interprets omens, or a sorcerer, or a charmer, or a medium, or a necromancer, or one who inquires of the dead. Again, it's saying one who inquires of the dead. Don't know. Whoever does these things is an abomination to the Lord. And because of these abominations, the Lord your God is driving them out before you. That is a clear and direct evidence. Sorcerers, omens, interpreters, charmers, fortunes, and ones who inquires of the dead. Uh, last verse we have here on the slide, 1 Corinthians 10, 13, and 14. So Saul, so Saul died for his breach of faith. He broke faith with the Lord and that he did not keep the command of the Lord. He also consulted a medium seeking guidance. He did not seek guidance from the Lord. Therefore, the Lord put him to death and turned the kingdom over to David, the son of Jesse. So we see in scripture a clear forbiddance of any sort of uh, consulting mediums or sorcerers. Uh, so if you go, um, if we keep the same uh, mindset, you can see that it's wrong. Uh, and it's a sin actually to go and uh, seek out uh, fortune tellers and sorcerers and, and all of the like. We are strictly uh, uh, commanded not to do so. All right, and the fact that uh, that commandment is out there and it's repeated so much. Uh, it kind of lends the uh, impression as to whether you can um, communicate with the dead. And if you even intend to or try to communicate with the dead, is it really the dead or is it just a demon uh, posing uh, to deceive you? Uh, these questions you have to consider. All right. Um, I see some comments in the chat. Anyone else have something to say? Any question to ask? Yeah. When you say the form of idolatry is definitely you seeking out uh, the dead rather than seeking out the one uh, for your answers to whatever questions you have in mind. You rely on these things, then you, it is idolatry because you put these spiritists, these mediums, or these uh, supposed uh, spirits of the dead, you put them dead of God. Uh, my or so people who say my family is watching over me, uh, that is a sin. Um, no, I wouldn't say that because 
Um, I wouldn't say it's a sin. Uh, if we think of the parable of Lazarus and the rich man again, uh, I don't know if he if he could have saw what his, what his uh, family members was doing, or he just knew what he left them doing. But he he wanted um, Lazarus to be sent to, to warn them of, of where he was and the torment that was to come. So just saying, my family watching over me. Uh, I don't think there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, your family, those who have died and went on, they're in the resting place. I'm not sure how aware are they of what's going on in this current world. I don't know if someone else could speak to that. And I don't think it's a sin just to say my family is watching. I don't know if anyone else could pronounce it. I guess going on what Maya said, uh, her family watching over, I, I guess I wouldn't think too much into that. I mean, I guess in the case of Lazarus, he was aware of what was going on, I guess, back on earth. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't look too deep into that family watching over me type thing. Now, the protecting portion, uh, your family, you dead and gone, they can't do nothing to protect you. Uh, every man for themselves, every soul for themselves. So there are, some people like to think that all their dead loved ones is uh, their guardian angels or uh, spirits watching over them. Uh, the only spirit we need to be concerned with watching over us is uh, spirit of God himself. All right. Once you die and gone, that's it. Uh, you cannot uh, pretend uh, your loved ones in this plane if you already have died and went on to the next plane. Uh, any other comments, questions, remarks? Hello, I don't go to the over woman. Pardon? I said, LOL, don't go to the old bear woman. Yeah, don't. Yeah, that's wrong. Now, again, with the old bear, old bear woman or the voodoo man or whatever, uh, I can't say, okay, so it's either that they do have some power granted to them by the powers of darkness, the devil and his demons, and they can tap into that power and do whatever with it. That's perhaps a school of thought, or you could say they have no power, it's just them pretending and faking. But, but the thing have, is, the pretending and faking is how people that's saying, like, listen, like, this person, like, they see in results. So that's why I said, like, I still feel like there's a demonic realm of things, and the devil have a certain percentage and leeway over something. Right. I, I don't know, because, because they... What? I don't know. Pe like Bahamians uh, swear by their Obel woman and man, and that's how this happened and this and that. Boy, I, I don't know. Right. So that's me personally. I lean more towards the fact. Um, I know not everyone does in the Church of Christ. Uh, before I did this, actually, I went and asked multiple different uh, brethren uh, their opinions on matters just to get a feel. And a lot of persons had different views. On, on this very thing you're talking about now. So it's, it's, it's very, it's a divided uh, topic. Persons believe different things. I personally lean more towards that persons can. Uh, okay, for, I do know, and it's universal, that the devil and his demons do exist and they do have influence on mankind. What is questionable is the extent of that influence. Whereas the um, persons like me and you, average human beings, could tap into that demonic power and do certain things, or where uh, um, we don't have access to that power and it's, it's all uh, just false. But the main point is there's a deception and it's wrong. Because how I see it, yeah, because how I see it, if <laughs> we're <laughs> disciples of Christ, if we're disciples of Christ, you don't think people are disciples of the devil? Of course. And in the same way we give our life to Christ, people can give their life to the devil. And in the same way we get the Holy Spirit, you don't think that they get in some demonic spirit? And as you said, it's questionable the extent of what they could do with it. But I feel like yin yang, you know? Yeah. Yeah. 
Any other comments? Each and why and what you gotta say. Hello. Hey, who's that? It's Kristen. So Go ahead. I have like a little story to tell y'all. And based off of this story, it kind of like it kind of made me believe even more that those things was real. Like, you see, he's talking about the air, old bear woman and stuff like that. And people who get fixed and stuff. But anyway, so basically, this, I had a friend and his mom, his mom, I guess they were going through like a divorce. And the husband basically just left. This was before the divorce. The husband just one day, he just got up and he left, he left his clothes, left everything, left all his possessions in the house. And he just went to live with the woman who I guess he was shacking up with. And the mother was like distraught about it. And she didn't take it well. She didn't take it well, but they noticed like, I guess a few months in because she was still like making little efforts to try and rekindle stuff because they did work on the same job. They had like a business together. So when she would see him, she'd still try to rekindle stuff or like, you know, try to talk to him. But he just wasn't basically on that run. And they noticed like a few months later, like she just started acting really weird. Like, she just, I don't know, like, from on a scale from 1 to 10, she just went straight down. Like, she just was, she started saying that she felt something in her stomach. Like, she felt weird. Like, something in her stomach. She used to walk around the house groaning. And it started to progress. Like, she would start to walk backwards. And she would, she'd get the knife. And she'd be asking the son to cut her stomach open because she feel like something was in there. And she was just, she was just basically doing a lot of weird stuff. Stuff you just can't explain. And one day, because they usually don't leave her home because she started to get worse. But one day, she, they left her home by herself and she lit herself on fire. And when they came home, she was just standing up there, still basically almost in flames. And they got a towel and stuff, and they was trying to pot it out. And they was just trying to get her in the car to get her to the hospital. And they were saying how it's like she didn't even feel anything. Like, she was just standing there, like, like you know, someone who burning up, they'd be screaming, they'd be crying or freaking out she like she didn't feel anything and she was trying to fight them back and they was they was yucking her like you know and seeing that her skin was burnt and all that you would feel some type of pain how they was yucking her and trying to force her in the car she ain't feel nothing and she just basically died later in the hospital like she was getting better but she just ended up dying suddenly and like every like that whole thing because it was more to it but like the whole thing and how she ended up there like i just couldn't like it just wasn't normal it wasn't normal at all and they basically was thinking that the lady who he was having the affair with that she fixed her or whatever you want to call it so that them two would never get back together and she'd leave him alone because she wasn't leaving him alone. I, I don't know. I believe that she was fixed or something else was going on, but that was a normal. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's uh, powerful. Um, I can't discredit it. Like I say, um, I don't know the extent of we know the persons do uh, fall on demonic uh, spirits, uh, fall on the devil, and have sold their soul to the devil, uh, uh, committed to him and their own wickedness. I can't say, or 
it was completely fake. Because uh, the lady is dead now, and her family has an account of how she died. It's not. So I cannot knock it, but also uh, we could take into consideration that some of the uh, symptoms you mentioned that she had uh, are concurrent with uh, some psychological disorders that causes persons to uh, have mood swings, like you say, the pain in the stomach. Um, you know what that could have been. Uh, the numbness. So the fire, uh, when she lit herself on fire, like she didn't feel it. Uh, we know uh, certain uh, psychological disorders uh, cause that too. Uh, Huntington's disease uh, causes the brain to uh, swell and deteriorate, deteriorate, and as these cells deteriorate, uh, it causes it, it causes it causes you to be numb. The pain uh, it causes you to see things. It causes you to be out of touch with reality and all kinds of different things. So I don't know, uh, I can't say whether or not she's fixed or she just had some deep psychological disorder. But we always hear accounts of these things happening and it's definitely- uh, Okay, who's on Landy? So I believe that she wasn't crazy because that man did come back for something of her. And as far as I know, that's all you need, a possession of the person that you're trying to inflict pain or do something on. Yeah, so they, they typically say that uh, persons who don't voodoo, voodoo or obey, you need some item that belongs to the person in order for the spell or the enchantment to work. That's what they say. Uh, again, I don't know. I can, I can uh, debunk it. Uh, but we just have to take all things into consideration. And even if these persons have access to these dark powers, where they could do things like this, uh, all the dark powers still have the yield to the supreme power, which is God. So even if persons can tap into uh, demonic powers, we as believers, uh, children of God, have access to far greater power. All right. So as we conclude, uh, uh, let's talk about uh, things more so as it relates to ghosts, and then we'll, we'll get back to the games. Can the dead haunt houses? You know, in Hollywood, a main feature of Hollywood movies is always houses being haunted, and uh, places uh, having spirits uh, still lingering in them. In Job chapter 7, verse 9 to 10, it says, as the cloud disappears and vanishes away, so he who goes down to the grave does not come up. He shall never return to his house, nor shall his place know him anymore. So that right there kind of uh, debunks uh, the fact that someone can come back from the dead, like the spirit of someone who died can come back, and that the spirit can haunt the place, because it says he who goes down to the grave does not come up. The only person we know went into the grave. The, the few persons who we know about in scripture are going down to the grave and coming out with Lazarus uh, and Jesus himself. And then Moses, when you see him appear in the transfiguration. But all these were miracles that God himself allowed. And this is speaking to the general fact that you can't, you can't have. If people die with unfinished business to care for, they do not become ghosts and haunt places that people they need. Like, uh, it's in the Bible in Psalms chapter 146, verse 4. It says, When his breath departs, he returns to the earth. On that very day, his plans perish. Okay, so that right there speaks to the, uh, the inability of persons to come back and haunt places. Uh, when his breath departs, he returns to the earth. He dies, and on that very day, his plans perish. Uh, again, in Hollywood, a lot of times in these movies, we see. Uh, the person, like someone died in the house, they died a very violent death. And then anyone who moves into the house, the spirit of that person haunts and torments them. All right. Uh, the scripture is basically showing how uh, that is impossible because the very day you die, uh, all your plans perish. Okay. Can the dead talk to the living? All right. For the living know that they will die, but the dead know nothing. And they have no more reward for the memory of them is forgotten. Also, their love, their hatred, and their envy have now perished. Nevermore will they have a share in anything done under the sun. 
And that's from Ecclesiastes chapter 9, verse 5 and 6. All right, so if the dead know nothing, uh, this, I guess, here speaks to and uh, debunks uh, the fact that um, uh, and shows why you shouldn't even go to mediums or, or spirits uh, asking them um, what you should do, uh, in life, which decisions you should make, because the dead, uh, according to the scripture, they know nothing. And if we buttress this with uh, what happened with Saul and the witch of Endor, then you probably could say that Jesus, uh, that God himself allowed uh, Samuel's spirit to come forth and give him the prophecy that he would die in battle. Otherwise, uh, the dead know nothing. According to Ecclesiastes chapter 9, verse 5 and 6. All right, so what, what else does the Bible say about communicating with familiar spirits or ghosts? In Isaiah chapter 8 and 19, it says, And when they say you consult the mediums and the spiritists who whisper and mutter, should not a people consult their God? Should they consult the dead on behalf of the living? In verse 20, uh, the King James Version goes on to say, To the law and to the testimony, if they speak not according to this word, it is because there is no light in them. So I mentioned this uh, scripture earlier. Uh, where it's forbidden you to consult medium and spiritists. Uh, and it's saying, should people not consult their God? You should consult God and not um, ghosts or familiar spirits. And I believe uh, these ghosts or familiar spirits are most likely, if they are there, they are demons posing as these persons, not the actual person themselves. And we see. Uh, we are command uh, in Leviticus 19 and 31 the commandment to not uh, regard mediums or familiar spirits and not to seek after them or be defiled by them. So, on the All right. So, in the King James Version of the Bible, the word ghost appears 108 times. Of these, the word is never used in the sense of the spirit of someone who has died. It is used in only two ways. First, it appears in the phrase to give up the ghost, which means to die, uh, like Christ did, uh, when he was on the cross and gave up the ghost. And secondly, it occurs as the title of the Holy Ghost, which is the third person of the Godhead or the Trinity. The Bible refers to ghosts or spirits of the dead as familiar spirits and warns us against having anything to do with them. So what we, uh, what we commonly view as ghosts, meaning the departed spirits of our loved ones are still existing in this plane, uh, they are uh, familiar spirits, or what we call uh, demons, okay? The take home for us is, uh, this is a pyramid showing the hierarchy of power. So at the base, you have humans, uh, of course, um, we, we don't have the kind of powers that we see demons have, or that see themselves as. Uh, we know demons have superhuman strength. Uh, they have the power to manipulate, uh, manipulate things. Uh, we don't have that kind of power. And then we see at the top of the pyramid, God, that's the supreme power. But what we do have is a link, a direct link to God through Jesus Christ and his Holy Spirit that empowers us to, uh, to overpower any dark or demonic forces out there. So with God, Satan, nor his demons, nor any dark powers out there uh, can harm us as people. All right? So ghosts are real. That is fiction in the fact that from scriptures and everything that we considered and studied, uh, ghosts uh, in the terms of our loved ones or persons or strangers still lingering and existing in this realm, we can say that's fiction. That's, that's fiction. You know that persons, when they die, they go to a, a resting place that you can't leave uh, to await judgment. Only examples we see of persons leaving this place uh, was through a miracle performed by uh, God or Jesus. The devil and his minions, the demons are out there seeking to deceive the world. That's a fact. You know, for a fact that uh, the devil uh, and his minions, they're all about deception. In fact, the very first thing uh, the devil did was deceive Eve to eat the, the fruit that put us in all this mess now. 
So everything about the devil uh, and his minions, demons, are uh, deception. We know that the demons, in fact, do have power. That's undeniable. They do have power. All right? And we know that demons have possessed persons in the past. Do, do, do they possess them now? I would say no, they don't possess them in the way. They don't possess them now in the way they did in the Bible. But that can be argued uh, as a lot of uh, varying views on such. Okay. Uh, like I say, demons can't possess people in the way that was manifested in the Bible. I believe that's fiction. We don't see, we don't see that happening uh, now. We don't see that manifested uh, in uh, and now as it was in the Bible. In the Bible, we see uh, demons of super strength and uh, um, going into swines and influencing them. We see them uh, throwing themselves in the fire. We see demons causing persons to be. Uh, blind or mute. Uh, even with how Hollywood uh, expresses demon possession now, and a lot of persons' accounts of demon possession is inaccurate with how we see it manifested in the Bible. Uh, like I mentioned, with the disrespect, the uh, blatant disrespect uh, of God that a lot of persons who claim to be possessed now do, uh, we don't see that in the Bible. We never see a demon disrespect uh, God. What we do see is them humbling themselves quickly uh, when, when they see God. God is almighty and every spiritual power out there must see the him. That's a fact. All right? So uh, we know the spiritual, you know this in the spiritual world a little bit. Uh, we know the demons have power. We know Satan has power, but God is the ultimate power. And finally, there's nothing wrong with seeking out the dead. You clearly see uh, 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 forbiddance in scripture. Uh, we are told and commanded not to do such. All right, so whether you can see go the dead or not, uh, some people will argue you could. Uh, some would argue, yes, you can see go the dead, but it wouldn't really be the dead. It would be a demon posing as that dead person. Some person would say, oh, you could actually see go the dead and communicate with the actual dead. Uh, either way, we are uh, commanded not to do so, but to put our whole trust in God. Uh, yeah, uh, final scripture I want us to read tonight. Ephesians 6, 10, and 18. Can I get a volunteer to read that, please, anyone? As we seek to close. I got it. All right, All right so... Um... Ephesians 6, 10 to 18. I read, finally, be strong in the Lord and his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Therefore, Put on the full armor of God so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground and after you have done everything to stand. Stand firm then with the belt of truth buckled around your waist, with the breastplate of righteousness in place and with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to all this, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, and pray in spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for all the Lord's people. Thanks, Dwayne. Appreciate that. So I think this is a good note to end on. Um, we know that the dark uh, demonic forces and powers out there, and we know that's what we are struggling against. Uh, and this world is well beyond physical. Well be honest. But once we do, we aforementioned and put on the whole arm of God. Uh, no demonic power, no obey, no voodoo, none of that can overcome us because God is the supreme and ultimate power. Uh, any final comments, questions, concerns, remarks before we close with a prayer? Uh, why do you think? Okay, I got a question. Why do you think God didn't outright address spirits of demons like he did speaking in tongues and indicating that it's done away with? 
Um, why do I think? Um, I can't say why. There's a lot of questions I have forgotten why he did things, we really did things, but we we know he's all knowing, he's all powerful, so he, he set the system up and he knows uh, best. Um, I can't remember the scripture exactly how it's said, maybe Keith could help me. Uh, that speaks to uh, the time being um, passed for um, signs and wonders and all these things, but it, it, it uh, it doesn't only speak to speaking in tongues, but it speaks to all the other signs and wonders too. It doesn't single out uh, demonic possession, but we could attribute that in and put it right there along with all the other uh, miraculous things that we still have. Exactly, Lundy. I mean, the Bible speaks about um, signs and wonders as that which confirms God's word. And so you're right to say that um, along with speaking in tongues and um, prophecy and, and all that, the, uh, the casting out of demons, you know, they too um, can fit into that signs and wonders. Um, mm -hmm. uh, you know, again, you know, I, I often quote the scripture, Jesus, uh, in the book of John, it says that Jesus did many other signs in front of his disciples, which are not written in the, in the book, but these are written that you may believe. And so again, the reference for us is what is written. Uh, uh, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Um, good class tonight to Landy. I commend you on your research and your ability to, um, you know, to develop and, and present. And also I commend your humility. Uh, together, sometimes we have to hold hands and, and examine the scriptures uh, and come up with truth. But that stay there, that is stay in that posture to know God's will and know truth. Appreciate it. All right. If there's no final comments or questions or remarks, uh, let me ask Jimmy, you still here? Jimmy, if you're here, you can close this out in prayer. Right, yeah, man. Um, as far as goes, then, Father, I thank you for bringing us here this evening. I thank you for blessing Landy and allowing them to send a wonderful message for us tonight. I thank you for allowing everybody that came out tonight um, to be able to come. And I pray that you'll be with us moving forward, that this ministry will continue um, working through you, Lord. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. All right, thank you. Good night. Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. One week. Yeah, yeah. Au revoir.